Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your island, maybe for better gameplay for your players or better quality of life for you as the owner. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. Today's video is no exception to that rule. I'm going to show you a method today that I'm sure is going to increase your quality of life as the owner of your server. Now, in the past, a lot of people have wondered if my my method of doing things when dealing with your server and adding oxide is the easiest most efficient way of doing things and up until recently I thought yes that was the easiest and most efficient way to deal with it. so on wipe day or the first time you run your server or whatever the situation might be you run your server you shut your server down and then you go back in and you install oxide the same process has to take place every time you want to update your server let's say it's face punches regular update day maybe they've put out just a new package for example we just did Chinese New Year, so there was an update for that. There, of course, would have been an oxide update as well to go with it. Anyways, it's just annoying to have to do one thing and then have to do the other one every time. Why can't we automate that process? Well, now I know a way, and now I'm going to show you how to do it today. So how all of this came about is obviously in my comment section on my YouTube channel, plus in my discord, I get a lot of questions about people wanting to automate their processes. And while I fully respect that up until recently, there really was no way to do it, or at least there was no way that I knew how to do it. So I was telling my friend Dennis from icetoast.com about these people asking about how to do it. And he did what he does. And he just, you know, whipped something up in his head and he said, here, try this. So we went back and forth and we ended up coming up with a solution for it, or at least it was a solution that worked for him when he he sent me the same solution. I couldn't get it to work on my own personal PC. I couldn't get it to work on my dedicated box, but we couldn't figure out a reason why it didn't work. So I'm going to introduce this method to you, showing you something that doesn't work on my own PC, but Dennis believes should work on everyone else's PC. We don't really know why yet, but that's where we're at. So if I show you this method and it works on your PC or your dedicated server, great, you're laughing. If for whatever reason it doesn't work, don't worry. I'm going to show you a second method right after this one that I was was able to make it work on my computer. So the first method that I'm going to show you today is just called the tar method. That's not its official name. That's just something that I came up with. In fact, I actually had to message Dennis and say, Hey, can I call it the tar method? And he said, yeah, sure. That works. So now bear in mind, I know nothing about the internal workings of how windows actually does things. So utilizing the tar command is a built in command for windows. What are the different applications for it? I have no idea. I just know how it's supposed to work in this application. So I'm going to show you how it all works. So if you've been following along with my channel and you've used my guide to set up your very own Rust server, this is exactly what your batch file is going to look like or some variation of this. Of course, there's going to be differences, but it's going to look similar to what we've got on the screen right now. And of course, you know that if you have Oxide installed, I have shown you how to remove the updater line, take that information and put it into a separate folder. And then that becomes your updater batch file, which basically makes it so that it doesn't erase Oxide every time you restart your server. So if you're going to attempt what I'm about to show you how to do, you're going to take that information outside of your updater batch file that you've now created from watching previous videos. You're going to take that information. You're going to put it back into your original batch file so that it looks the same as mine. You now have the steam login and then the rest of the server information below it. So if we were to run this batch file just the way it is, this would start up a vanilla server, no oxide. You'll notice at the end of my updater line, I actually have validate in there right before the quit. You don't necessarily have to have validate in there for this to work. This is just a method for me to show you that it is actually grabbing the update when it doesn't necessarily need it. So if we go in right below our updater line and we add this section right here, these couple of lines right here are what's going to go to the UMod website. It's going to download Oxide for you. It's going to extract it. It's going to install it into this folder and it's going to do everything automatically. And then once it's done all of that, of course, it's going to delete the Oxide zip folder. And don't worry about trying to write down this code. I'm going to put this in the video description down below. So if you are able to use the tar method or method number one, all that information will be available listed as tar method. So I'm just going to save this batch file and then I'll show you what happens when I run this server. So I've gone in and put a couple of pauses in there. I don't want you to put pauses on yours. I just want to be able to explain to you guys what's happening as it happens. So I put pauses in there so the batch file will actually stop at those locations before it continues on. All right, so this is the tar method running right here. So as you can see, it has logged in anonymously. It's going to Steam. It's checking for an update. And because I have the validate line on there, it's downloading a new version regardless of whether mine was updated or not. So we'll just wait for this to finish doing its thing. And now it says success app 2585. 
550 has been updated and installed. And this is where it's pausing for an interaction from me. This won't happen on your batch file because I'm requesting that you don't put in those pauses. So all I need to do is hit enter and it's going to continue on and it's going to grab oxide and you can see there it just extracted it. And if you caught it quick enough, it actually showed up in my folder as oxide.zip. And then of course the rest of that script tells it to delete that oxide folder once we're done with it. So this is what happens in my case. So even though I press enter to continue, it doesn't actually do anything. It just basically stalls right there. And I've waited this out. Dennis informs me that it could take like 10 to 15 seconds in order for it to actually roll past this point and actually proceed with the server startup. However, in my specific case, it doesn't actually roll past this point. So if after a reasonable amount of time goes by and your server actually rolls past this point and continues on with the server boot up, then this method works great for you. Continue with it and you can stop watching the video at this point. If you end up with a similar situation to what I have here, where it just seems to hang up here forever. And like, seriously, I've waited for this for like 10 or 15 minutes in the past, and it never rolls past this point, which then of course led me to go back to Dennis and say, Hey man, can we come up with a different solution that's going to work on my computer? Because I need to be able to show my viewers something actually working in order to have the credibility to even show that this is supposed to work. Now that all being said, it's not that I don't believe that the tar method should work. It's just that I haven't been successful making it work yet. So method number two, or the one that I've been able to make work on my own system, I call it the dependency method. Why do I call it the dependency method? Well, obviously because it has a dependency that is required in order to make it work. That dependency is unzip for Windows. Don't worry, I'm gonna put a link to unzip for Windows in the video description down below in the description with the dependency method. So once you're on the unzip for Windows page, you just, you wanna download this file right here, the complete package except sources. Once you've got that downloaded, you're just gonna run the installer and it's just gonna be a very simple installation, next, next, next done 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 and then that's all you need to do with that and now we need to go back into our batch file and make the changes in there to reflect that we're now using unzip for windows instead of using the tar method so as long as you didn't change any of the default installation parameters when you were installing unzip for windows it's going to go into your program files x86 folder etc etc this is what it's going to look like so we're doing essentially the same thing we're going to the umod website we're downloading the file oxidemod.zip now the difference is happening right here so now instead of using tar like we were before now we're telling the batch file to call on unzip for windows to unzip the folder that we've now downloaded from the umod website and if everything goes as planned you're going to see this all happening on screen anyways and then of course once it's done extracting everything it's going to automatically delete that zip folder that we downloaded from the umod website all right so same as before i'm going to put all of this script down in the video description down below. You don't have to try to remember this. You just need to remember where to put it. So we're gonna put it right after the line that we log into Steam CMD and we run the update. So this right here is pretty much what a default batch file would look like or a batch file that you would end up with if you followed my videos to a T. This is exactly what it would look like right here. Then we just wanna go in right after the update line and we wanna insert that script in there. Once we're done all of that, we just need to save our batch file and then we can close that, we're done with it. Now we're gonna run our batch file now, of course, I've gone back into my batch file and I've put a couple of pauses in there so it won't automatically roll past all of the important information that I'm trying to show you. So if done correctly, yours is going to act a little bit different. It's not going to wait for any input from you. It's just going to roll past and do everything that we're telling it to do. All right, so let's run our dependent method right here. So as you can see, same as before, I've logged into Steam anonymously. I'm going and grabbing the update. And again, because I have that validate command on my batch file, it's installing an update even though it was already updated before. So now that our app is fully updated, we can press any key to continue so now it's going to go and download the see even right there it happened too fast it went to the umod website it downloaded oxidemod.zip it unzipped it it extracted all of the files into the folder where we wanted it to be and now in my case it's saying press any key to continue in fact let's have a look here let's have a look at the folder where the server is actually residing so you can actually see this oxidemod.zip right here that's the folder that our method automatically installed from the umod website i didn't download that so as soon as i hit enter on my batch file it should roll past and delete that folder for me and sure enough it automatically deleted it there was another pause right after that so it automatically deleted it now I can go ahead and just let the batch file roll ahead and finish starting up my server and as you can see it rolled past all of that and now it's proceeding with the rest of the server startup just like we would expect it to while I'm waiting for this server to finish booting up if you haven't already done so make sure you subscribe to the channel like this video if you found it useful in any way shape or form also I'd like to know in the comment section down below which method worked for you did you try the tar 
bar method first and did it work? And if that didn't work for you, did you try the dependency method? And of course, did the dependency method work for you in the end? So this is what my test batch file looks like right now with all of those pauses in there. I'm just going to take those pauses out and I'm going to run this one more time to show you in real time how fast this actually is. Don't worry, it's only going to take about 10 seconds. I'm actually also going to take out this validate right here because we don't need to have this validated every time. You can choose to leave that validate on there or not. It just determines whether it's actually going to check with Steam to see if there's an update or not. If you leave that validate command in there, it's going to run the update regardless of whether you're up to date or not. If you take that validate out, it's only going to update if there's actually a newer version available than the one that you currently have. All right, so let's set our stopwatches and see how long this actually takes. So we're logging in. No update required because we took validate out. Let's install Oxide. Boom, let's delete the folder. Let's see how long it takes to actually roll past this point. And we're done. So within five seconds, it automatically rolled past that update point and is now continuing on with the rest of the server boot. All right, so like I said before, I'd really like to know which method works better for most people. Are you able to use the tar method or do you have to use the dependency method? Anybody that has set up a server using any of my previous videos should be installing this. This is something that so many people have been asking for for such a long time. I'm so happy that I'm finally able to come through and give you a solution. I didn't come up with this solution though. Dennis from Icehost definitely created this for me. I just get to be the one that brings it to your attention. All right, guys. As always, if you found this video helpful in any way whatsoever, make sure you leave me a big thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And low key, next week, I'm going to be putting out a video that is going to change so many people's lives. This is another feature on top of the automatic updating system that we've now done today. This is another feature that people have been asking me for for such a long time. For the longest time, there was no known way to do this, or at least not a way that people were willing to share. So up until now, I've been saying that what we're about to do next week has been impossible. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now. You guys have to wait till next Friday to see what the hell it is that I'm talking about. All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again next week. Until then, make sure you're staying safe and take care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next Friday.